We're going to talk our version of power rankings, which we really prefer to call emoji tiers because nobody cares about your one through 30. We care about batching them. And that's what we're going to do here. So we have multiple tiers. It's very simple. We have a top tier. We call it diamond. There's three slots. Then we have a next tier down hearts, typically eight slots. Next tier down question mark. Also, typically eight slots, but things get a little bit cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs this close to the playoffs. Then we go to a question mark tier. You already went to the question mark. Then you get to the thumbs down. Oh, question mark, then thumbs down. Yeah. Also, typically eight slots. And then we're supposed to only have three names in the poop tier. But this close to the playoffs, a lot of teams are pretty poopy. So we. (laughs) You're not wrong. It's pretty deep. The list gets pretty deep, yeah, and we get a little flexible with it. So, Brad is going to lead us off. He's going to tell us what his diamond tier looks like. Go ahead, Brad. Tell us. Okay, here we go. My diamond tier looks like the Orioles, the Dodgers, and the Braves, not in that order. Uh, But those three are the tip top, the diamond tier of Major League Baseball as it currently constitutes. Bruh. And Brig, me too. You're a diamond too. Oh, it I changed it, but it stayed the same. Yeah. <laughs> Braves, this... Dodgers, Orioles are my diamond tier as well. That's yeah. exactly how I feel. And I don't want to hear about it. Which two of those bad. teams do you think meet in the World Series? Or do you think there's a third or do you think there's somebody else that comes out of the American League? I don't I don't know. Um I th- I don't know. I think the Mariners continue to be just interestingly interesting enough. The Astros are just interesting enough to spoil some things in the bracket. So I don't know. Um, I don't see it being the Twins. I don't see it being the Rangers. No. I don't see it being the Blue Jays. No. So I guess it's all going to come down to the West. And what on oh, the Rays? There. And the oh Rays yeah, forget too, about so. the Rays. The Rays, the Rays. I don't know why. I for I see they're they're on a tear. They're still doing <laughs> well. I still forget about the Rays. That is a that must be some character flaw. I got to work on that. <laughs> or maybe it's like a mental block, you know? Because I'm a Yankees fan. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Because I am so focused on the on the West right now. So that you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, moving on. I'm going to go to my heart tier. I have the Brewers, Marlins, Phillies, D-backs, Rays, Reds, Blue Jays, Astros. Again, not in that order. We bunch these together. We don't have them in any specific order in these tiers. Um, The Brewers, I feel like, have separated themselves from the rest of the NL Central. I'm not worried about any – the Cubs could still, like, potentially come in and take that from them. Yeah. But I don't know if the Cubs are consistent enough to take it from the Brewers, right? Right, right. Because um, the Brewers have just been so steady for most of the year. Um, the Blue they Jays. A lot. If I was going to put anybody at the bottom of this tier, it would be the Blue Jays. And this is this is something that is really interesting: is that Vlad Guerrero Jr. There's been a lot of talk about him digressing this year. Yeah. He hasn't been playing as well, which. He's still been playing fine, right? Still yeah. better than most of the league, but he's not the he, he didn't take the step forward that they had hoped. And even when like Julio Rodriguez didn't take the step forward that they had hoped at the beginning of the season, he's certainly taken it since August 1st. Since sure. since July 1st, he's he's taken a step forward, right? Mm-hmm. You didn't mm-hmm. see Vlad Guerrero Jr. make the steps and the changes that he needed to do to take a step forward during the season that they had hoped. Um and I teased on Thursday night about some stuff that I saw on X about the Blue Jays. Yeah. I saw several fans talking about how it looks like there are conditioning issues in the Blue Jays clubhouse. Alec Manoa came into camp. I think they said 10 to 15 pounds overweight. They're talking about Alejandro Kirk being obviously overweight. And Vlad Guerrero Jr. is out of shape. R- remains to be out of shape, despite the fact he dropped a few pounds in the offseason. But it seems like he's more out of shape now than he was then. Yeah. And so... When it comes down to it, I was really hesitant to put them in the heart just because I could easily put them in 
the question mark, but they've been playing so well lately. That's what got them into the heart. That's what got them over the top. Is that they need to play well now to get themselves into the into the wild card spot to get into the playoffs? Yeah, and they're doing it right now. Because heck, next week they could be down in the question mark tier, but for now, this is where they're going to be. Yeah. Are right, you ready for your heart? Ready for your heart tier? I'm ready. I'm ready, man. There you go. So. Very similar. I think I expanded mine by one. I've uh-huh. got the Brewers, the Mariners, Cubs, Phillies, D-backs, Rays, Twins, Blue Jays, Astros. Everything you said about the Blue Jays, I agree with, but I agree more about the Marlins. For a lot of the same reasons, just you just don't know. I know they're eight and two in their last ten, and they're still, you know, they're still fighting, but I just feel better about the Blue Jays' chances in wild card contention than I do about the Marlins. Mm-hmm. So that's why the Marlins, for me, ended up in, in not in this tier, and they ended up in the question mark tier. But I still really like the Cubs' chances. I know it's a long shot, but it's fun. So I'm it is give fun. It to them, mm-hmm. And I'm going to watch closely for those reasons. The Rays deserve to be here the twins are here by default because of their division situation um i love the d-backs and i'm not going to apologize for it (laughs) so i just i i just can't it's honestly it's because of corbin carroll i think that without corbin carroll i'm not sure i'd care as much and that might be a little bit short-sighted and i i don't i'm okay with that but the point is it's how i feel so so deal with it well it's Um, crazy though because like baseball (laughs) is such a team sport that like you can't win a world series with one guy but apparently you can turn around the fortunes of your franchise and the attitude Mm. in your clubhouse with one guy because it happened in seattle last year when julio rodriguez got up here and granted jp crawford really took over for kyle seager in, in a major leadership role and turned things around but corbin carroll seems like he's done a lot to instill a winning attitude in that clubhouse. And maybe yeah. part of it is Yuli Gur- uh is it Yuli? Yuli Guriel? Guriel, yeah. Yeah, he's there. He's there in Arizona. And and having come from a winning franchise in Toronto, that maybe that's helping things. I don't know, but yeah. things are feel a lot different this year than they did last year. They they do feel different. It's the same with the Orioles, right? Like l- l- last season when Adley Rutschman showed yeah. up, it just changed everything. And yeah, I know at that point that they, they were just so far out that they couldn't make up the difference. And this year they just started there. They did. And I know they've shored up some of the difference there with other guys. It's not just Rutschman now. But I think we're going to see that and hope to see that in Arizona come next season as well. I thought that Dominic Canzone would come in and be the first step in that same direction. But then they moved him to Seattle. So it's really interesting. Anyway, the point of the story is I really like the D-backs. I just do, and I like mm-hmm. the way they play, and uh, and I'm excited about them, and I don't think you can st- – still don't think that you can all the way count them out yet. So for those reasons, they're in. All right, Brad, let's move to your question mark. Okay, my question mark. I have the Rangers, Cubs, Twins, Mariners, and Giants. So I have the Twins here just because um, I know they're going to win their division, but I feel like a question mark is good enough to win that division, right, because – Nobody else is taking charge and wanting to win it, even though the right. Twins are kind of up and down. They've been playing better lately, but you still don't know what you're going to get with them day to day. I have the Cubs here as well because, Brig, I have lost a lot of money with, because of the Cubs this year because I was like, okay, today they're losing. No, they won. Well, okay, yeah. today <laughs> yeah. today they're winning. Well, no, they lost. Like I feel like the Cubs every single day are a question mark. <laughs> Right. And so they're just going to live here in my question mark tier for the rest of forever until they're in the World Series. At that point, I will move them to the diamond. But until that <laughs> happens, they're going to live in my question mark tier. <laughs> okay. Or they win 15 games in a row. But even then, I don't know. So Yeah, you're like, I don't know. <laughs> so okay. I also have uh, the Mariners, the Giants, and the Rangers. Um, Rangers because they should be a lot better. But... At the same time, though, I felt like the pitching was going to catch up to them later this year eventually anyway, and it right. did. It did. Pitching, and the bullpen right. has been their issue. 
The Mariners, after going on that tear, have really disappointed me. The bullpen has just been gassed, absolutely gassed. They were lights out for so long. Yeah. And now the offense is producing. They're having good games, but the bulk, no lead is safe anymore in Seattle. And that's the big problem. That yeah. is the really big problem is that the bullpen has just absolutely fallen apart because, as Jerry DePoto said, they are pooped. And we're seeing the effects of it. And the Giants, I would like the Giants to go on a tear and do really well at the end of the season and, and get themselves sure. a wild card spot and go in really hot in the playoffs. But doesn't seem like they want to. It, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. They'll have like four or five really good days and have four or five really bad days. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with the Giants yeah. right now. Tell us about your question mark I to your break. My so my question mark to your is is expanded. Mm-hmm. Um, but okay, here we go. The these are teams that I'm I'm not confused by. I'm just not sure how to feel about them day to day. Kind of like how you describe the Cubs. You're like, wait a minute, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. And that's fine. But the other thing that goes into this with some teams is it, it has a lot to do with who they're playing against. Right. And and it's, uh-huh. those are as big of question marks as who they're going to show up as and who they're going to show up against. So for instance, the Red Sox for all intents and purposes are in the hunt, right? They're still six games back in the wild card race. Um, and so there's still time for them to, to make splashes, but their question mark scenario is way different than Texas. Like mean, you defined it really well, Texas, you don't know what's going to happen ever. They don't, they should be way better than they are, but the pitching makes no sense. And it's like, well, why, why? And so you're scratching your head wondering why the Rangers aren't, that why they're not even they they don't even have a wild card opportunity yet they they're only a half game back right now but it feels like they're slipping they're 3 and 7 in their last uh 10 okay so cleveland and that's is up from same. where it was a couple days ago too exactly cleveland is the same situation because they <laughs> like they're not in the hunt in the wild card but they could still topple Minnesota, and that makes no sense to me. So they end up in the question mark. So they're all different in in the question mark situation. And I have to give the Yankees an opportunity here because they do they do occasionally surprise me and do really well. They go and and sweep the Astros for a weekend. Yeah, and so they're not. I can because they're also not mathematically eliminated. Add that to the young talent. I know I'm kind of a homer on this one. (laughs) Leave me alone. I still don't know who I'm going to get. I still don't know what the season's going to turn out to be for them. They're in my question mark. Okay. I dig. I like. Thanks. That's where I'm at. All right. My thumbs down tier. I have four teams here. And this is the thing about these teams is that these teams are not playing well. These are not good teams, but they can still ruin your day. Right. Because any given day they can come in and they can win a game when you're like, we need to win. We're going to Boston. We're going to Detroit. We're going to San San Diego. We're going to Cleveland. But you can show up and have your day ruined by not getting the win that you need or the wins that you need should the should things fall that way. Yeah. So the Red Sox, Tigers, Padres, and Cleveland's baseball club are the teams that I have in the thumbs down right now. Mm. For that reason, that that like that's the reason that they're not in the poop is that I could put all these. I feel like I could put all these teams in the poop tier and be fully justified. But because they can go in and they can ruin a team's day any day of the week, I put yeah. them in the thumbs down. Yeah, I like that. So, I like that a lot. Well, it's thank good. you. All right, show us your thumbs down, Brig. So short and sweet. So my <laughs> my poop my poop tier is huge, and my thumbs down tier looks like this. I got the Padres and the Pirates. <laughs> and just like Brad, I have a justification for why I have teams even showing up in this category at all at this point. And the reason I have them here is because I they still hold a glimmer of hope for next season. Their seasons are over. I'm not worried about what's happening here. What I'm worried about is what kind of momentum they might build that it's going to carry them into next season um, without, you know, maybe needing to build the whole thing from ground up, right? This is not, 
a total loss situation for these teams. And some of the teams in my question mark, they're going to slide into this category, and they're going to slide down here for the same reason. So I carved uh-huh. out a little space here. Like the Red Sox, great example. In the event that they don't break into the wild card situation, they it's not a total loss season for them. They just they're going to assess what's wrong. They're going to fix the gaps, and then we're going to see a different lineup come out next season. And it's going to be the same thing with the Marlins. I hope the Giants will do that. Hopefully, the Rangers will do that. So the this thumbs down category has a lot has a lot to do with teams that I know don't have any business being in the playoffs this year. It's not going to happen, but they could have, and they and we know what's wrong. And that's what I have these two in for them here. And come next see, next month when we talk about kind of final regular season emoji tears, this is this is that's what this category is for me now. It's your flex, it's your flex tier. Yeah, I'm gonna move in and out. Cool, I like it. I like that it's just the two teams because I feel like that fits as well. Thanks. So, all right, let's. Uh, this is my poop tier. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> at a glance it's all justifiable <laughs> <laughs> i have the a's cardinals mets royals white Sox, rockies nats i put the yankees in their brig pirates and the angels <laughs> um a's obviously mets obviously mm-hmm. underachieved all year long the royals the white Sox don't care anymore the royals here's the thing about the royals is the royals have had one of the best offenses since the all-star break I'll give them that, but their pitching is so, so bad, so bad, front to back, top to bottom. You can't do it with one guy. You just can't. Exactly, that you have to have them here, and they just, they can't produce enough offense to make up for that really bad pitching. So I, I do think if they can go out and they can figure out how to bring pitchers in to Kansas City, they'll be a force in the division next year, but until that happens, they're just it's just so bad there that they're not going to be yeah. able to. Um, the Rockies, Nats, Yankees, Pirates, Angels. The Rockies have been bad all year. The Nats have been terrible all year. The Yankees have just fallen so far that it was just like – and like we talked about, they they swept the Astros a couple weeks ago, and that was really good, but that was kind of an anomaly. And I feel like that was more of a chip-on-your-shoulder sweep than it was an uh, indicator of ability and performance right now. Um, mm, yeah. Cashman's yeah, – Cashman's going and and getting rid of Harrison Bader, who I I didn't think that made any sense. And then also himself being in Japan when his team is playing, like that to me just says he's checked out and looking for next year already anyway. Yeah. And like Jeter uh-huh. says, you're not eliminated; you still have a chance. Well, Brian Cashman feels like you've been eliminated; don't have a chance. So that's the way wow. I see that. That's a hot take, and I don't disagree with it honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Pirates have been sorely disappointing since their hot 60-game start. Um, yeah. They're here for now. I don't think they'll be starting here next year, I hope. Nah, At I the hope very not. least, the question mark. And then the Angels have just been such a dumpster fire since, like, I don't know, the All-Star break. Everything Artie Moreno took over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There you go. Um, yeah, the Angels have just been such a mess that mm. I do feel like I legitimately feel bad for Mike Trout and yeah. for Shohei Otani. And it feels like Anthony Rendon is just like, I don't want to play for you guys. I'm still hurt. Yeah, I'm still hurt. Of course. Right. Why do I want to go out there? Now trade me in the offseason. So, yeah, that's my poop tier. That's Tell a good one. Break. All right. I think I'm one team shy of yours. It's the yeah. Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one I deleted. <laughs> the only one. There was one. Um, there was one little change with the Tigers too. The, here, let me alibi the Yankees one more time. If they were in any other division, it would be a. It would be a more. It would be a different situation. It would be. You're, a tight you're not contest. wrong. You're not wrong. And so, for that reason, I just can't. It's just the math, right? The simple math that we all know I'm bad at is just leaves me room. <laughs> It just leaves me a little bit of room, which is why I got to put them where I put them in the question mark. So anyway, uh, poop tier. I agree with everything you said. I am really upset at the Mets. Just like really like a piece of my soul is aching because of it. I was really excited about Steve Cohen and his abilities. And I think that if they do, 
Yeah, but if I think that if they do start at a different spot with the rebuild, uh, the GM and and maybe a new manager and, and whatever, then I you know I think that we're going to see different things from them. So I hope that we don't start them this far down next season as well. Who knows? The point is, um, the the Tigers they could yeah the Tigers show tiny bits of flash every once in a while. And I want to like them more. I just can't get over the fact that Miggy is the only most exciting every single time reason to watch the Tigers. I know they have other guys that come and show up every once in a while, and I I think that's wonderful. But if it weren't for Miggy, they'd be here, and so they're here. Which I realize, before you all jump in the comments all over me, I realize we just gave Corbin Carroll's D-backs a whole bunch of credence for that same argument reversed. So I understand what I'm saying. I understand <laughs> the hypocrisy. I got it. That's just how I feel. So I do also have to say Matt. one. I have to say one thing about the Mets real quick. That's so funny is that we talk about their disappointment and underachieving, and everybody else does as well, right? All the time. So I work for a company that's based out of New York. I'm in Arizona. Um, we have an office here. So the New York team actually came out here to Arizona in March and I got to be, uh, got to know one of the guys there who is actually, he's a huge Mets fan. And so we were sitting there during lunch one day in March. This is March break. (laughs) It's like, I was like, Mets got a pretty good looking team. I was like, you think they're going to, you think they're going to do it this year? He goes, no, they're (laughs) going to find a way to mess it up. They always do. (laughs) In March, he he didn't have spring training hope. As a Mets yeah, fan, yeah, right. he's so yeah. beaten down. <laughs> he's just like, ah, we give him a hard time in meetings. Like, uh, somebody asked Chat GPT at work or time, like, can you fix my, can you like fix my life or whatever? And we always give him a hard time, like, well, you can start by not being a Mets fan anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a not too distant upgrade. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Not much of an upgrade this year, but it's an upgrade. There's there's two actually that just aren't that far away. Yeah. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> so, all right, baseball family, let us know what you think. Where are your emoji tiers sitting right now? You got any power ranking updates? Do you like the ones we selected? Do you want to argue with me about my one player philosophy with Miggy on one side and Corbin Carroll on the other? I think it's valid. <laughs> So go ahead and start popping off in the comments. I would love to hear what you have to say. 